Okay, here's the Hess Law video we were supposed to have yesterday. I'm going to try to do a little bit better job with it today and not screw up quite as much. All right, what Hess's Law does is it's going to take the um, heat of formation like what we did yesterday, but instead of doing an experimental value where we've done it time and time again, it's going to be for a value that takes place over a long period of time, things that we can't just readily measure as easily. It's not an experimental type thing. But what Hess's Law says is we can go from different equations, we can rearrange them to get the equation that we want to get. So let's take a look at our first equation. This is the equations on the back side of the sheet you did yesterday in class, or today in class, hopefully if you watch the video on the right time. Um, first question says, calculate the standard enthalpy for the combustion of sulfur to produce uh, sulfur dioxide. So what I'm going to do with this part first is I'm going to go ahead and write this equation. Okay, so combustion of sulfur, that's telling me I have sulfur plus O2, because I'm combusting it, yields SO2. Okay, we're back after that short little difficulty, but you can see we have SO2 down here, and we have a balanced equation, so everything is set there. Now we need to take from known equations, we need to try to make these into this equation. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get everything that's S on the left side, everything that's SO2 on that side. Now occasionally I might have to work with the other things too, like the O2, um, but hopefully we're going to work with the first things first and the rest will just kind of come out in the wash. So let's find out first. Okay, so I have an S on this side. Now how many S's do I have on this side? I have two. How many do I want? One. Now, if I have an S over here, it may cancel out. But um, since I have two on this side, and I don't have S anywhere else, I know at some point in time I'm going to have to reduce that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this whole equation by two. Okay, so we're going to divide everything by two. So that's going to leave this as just S. This is going to go from 3O2 to 1.5. This is going to go from two SO3s into just SO3. Okay, so that's my equation for there. Now, how is that going to change my enthalpy? My enthalpy is also going to be halved. So I'm going to take 790, which is a negative number, by the way, and I'm going to divide that by 2, which gives me negative 395 kilojoules. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this, just erase it. You guys can put just a line through it so you know you're done with it. All right. Now, my O2s, I have O2s on the left side. Both of them are there. I don't know which ones I need to flip yet. So we're going to leave everything where it's at right now. Okay, the SO2, I have the SO2 on the right side. On this particular case, though, I have SO2 on the left side, which in our case is the wrong side. So what we want to do is we want to flip this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write everything that's on the product side as a reactant. So I have 2SO3 yields. Everything on the reactant side is now a product. 2SO2 plus O2. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this up here. Don't need any more. You can just run a line through it. That's fine. And how that affects my enthalpy is my enthalpy gets flipped. If the equation's flipped, my enthalpy's flipped. So this goes from being a negative number into a positive number. So enthalpy is now 196 versus negative 196. Okay. So we change that. Get rid of it. Now, I have two SO3s here. I don't have SO3 at all down here. No worry about it right now. I have two SO2s up on the right side. Down here I have an SO2 on the right side. I want to keep it. But I don't want two of them. I only want one of them. So once again, we're going to have to divide by two. There's many ways we can manipulate these. We can multiply. We can divide um, different numbers. You don't have to just do two and multiply and divide by two. Um, it could be different things. It could be a three. It could be a four. Whatever. Okay, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I have SO3, I have SO2, and I have the weird one-half oxygen. Okay, 
Since I divided them by 2, how does that affect my enthalpy? I've got to divide it by 2. So I go from having 196 to 98 kilojoules. I don't even know why I need my calculator for this one. Put that away. Okay. So I have my enthalpies figured out. Um, now let's see to make sure that these are the correct equations to make our master equation down here. Okay. I have SO3 on one side. I don't have it anywhere down here. But do I have it on this side? Yes, I have an SO3 here too. So just like in math, if I have it on one side and the other, we get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a line through it. I don't need it. Okay. SO2, I have it on the right side. Do I want it on the right side? Yes. Do I have it anywhere over here? No. Let's circle it. On this side, I have an O2. Half of an O2. On the left side, I have one and a half O2s. Okay. So we get rid of the half. We get rid of one half of these. So we're left with just O2, which we want. I want to circle it. Okay, I have an S over on the left side, not on the right side. I circle it. So you can see everything I circled, I'm left with on my master equation. Okay. My enthalpies, all I need to do now is sum them. And we know that 95 and negative 395 is going to give us a negative 297 kilojoules. Okay, so that's how we get to a standard enthalpy on an equation that's going to take a long time that we won't have a table for. Okay, some of these things you won't find them in a table and that's okay. We use Hess's law. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to do another Hess Law problem. This one's a little bit more difficult. We're going to have to rearrange a couple things. Um, we're going to have to multiply. Uh, I don't think this one has any dividing on it, but um, we'll see some different things with this problem. Okay, what I've done is I've listed the first three. These are the ones that we know. Okay, I don't want to get that confused with the negative sign. Okay, so those top ones are the ones that we know. We know the enthalpy changes for them. The bottom one is what we're solving for. So let's go ahead and figure out um, how to arrange these equations to come up with this equation. Okay, I have NH3 on the left side, on the reactive side. I need four of them. There's only one place up top that has NH3, and that's going to be this second one right here. Okay, I need to get 2NH3 into 4NH3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by 2. Since I multiply it by 2, I need to multiply everything else times 2. Okay, so that's how I end up with those numbers. I just multiply everything by 2. Now, since I multiply them by 2, I also need to multiply my delta H. Okay, so my delta H was a negative 91.8. Now it needs to be negative 182.6. Alright, now the NH3 is on the right side. It's on the product side. I want it on the reactive side. So how am I going to do that? I need to flip the equation. So I'm going to flip-flop the equation. This is why you want to leave a little bit of room on these. Um, so I go 4 NH3 yields 2 N2 plus 6 H2. It should be 3.6. 183.6. Oh, great. Thank you. Take that, math. <laughs> All right, so what we do here, we do this. <laughs> Darn the luck. We started with 182, and then we had 1.6. Darn it. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is we have flip-flopped them. So let's go ahead and... That was probably eating at you, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and erase this. Again, you guys can draw a line in. We do not want to get confused with these things. So we want to get rid of anything that we have already used. Okay, because it will come back, it will haunt you. All right, so we got our NH3 exactly where we want it to be. We have the number. We have flip-flopped it. When we flip-flop it, this is one thing we didn't do, we didn't change the sign. So now the sign has changed. It's exactly where we want it to be. Okay, uh, the O2. We have O2s in multiple locations. Let's leave it alone. Let's skip it. Um, NO, or no gas. Um, it is in one location. 
It's the wrong number though, so let's fix that. I have four down at the bottom that I want to solve for. I have two up here in my equation. So I'm going to multiply by two, multiply by two, multiply by two, and then I'm going to multiply um, this final bit by two as well, which is going to give me what? Negative 361 kilojoules. Is my math right on that one, Zach? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so it's exactly where I want it. It's on the right side where I want it. Um, we're set. Okay, um, the H2O. I have H2O in one location. It's right here. Um, I need to make it 6, though, so I'm going to multiply by 3, which makes that a 6, which makes that 3, and which makes that 6. Okay, so since I multiplied everything by 3, I'm going to multiply the enthalpy as well by 3. which gives me a negative 1,450.8 kilojoules. Let me get rid of that. Okay, now it's time to go through. Let's cancel stuff out. Let's get rid of stuff. Okay, so I have four NH3s on this side. I have them there as well. Let's save it. Okay, let's see if we have our 502s where they should be. I have a 302, and I have a 202. No more O2s. Let's make sure that they're on the right side of the equation. And by right side, I mean the left side of the equation. So I have a 202, I have a 302. Both of them are reactants. That gives me 502s, right where I want them. Okay. 4NO. I have a 4NO up here. I do not have it anywhere else. Okay. 6H2O. I have 6H2O right here. I don't have it anywhere else. Okay, let's go through and make sure we can cancel stuff out now. Okay, the 6H2, 6H2, they are gone. I have a 2N2 and a 2N2, they are gone. So I'm left with the only parts of the equation remaining are what our master equation says, so we are set. Now again, all we have to do is sum up our enthalpies, and we will have an answer. So we have negative 361 plus 183.6, let's get rid of these top ones, plus negative 1450.8, and that gives us a delta H of negative 162, or excuse me, negative 1000. 628.2 kilojoules. All right. Now, things we can remember that we need to look at. Um, what type of reaction do we have? It is a negative delta H, so we have an exothermic reaction. Heat is being given off. Um, that is something that we will definitely be using later on. So hopefully this helps. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.